Hi, it is Dwyer. It is March the 11th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about an important fight that just took place at 154 pounds between Sergei Bogachuk and Brandon Adams. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now the over seven and a half rounds that we suggested in the pre-fight video, which is still up here on YouTube, delivered. More beer for us. But let's be honest, it barely delivered. Because the big underdog, Brandon Adams, got the KO in the latter part of the eighth round. In other words, had you bet on this fight, and this is a gambling story, you saw the first half of that round and you thought, okay, thank goodness, the over delivered. Then, of course, moments later, the fight ended. <laughs> Literally, moments later, Brandon Adams, left hook up top. Let's talk about why that worked. Boachuk was dominating the fight. Make no mistake about it. He's on his front foot. Adams is on his back foot. He's chasing Adams all over the ring. Adams is hardly throwing any punches back. Right? Taking a page out of his fight against Jamal Charlo. But understand, this is what KG veterans do. They don't want to go after you when you're 100% at the start of a fight. When you're fully rested and eager to make a point in rounds one, two, three, and four. No, Adams is waiting and he sees holes. He sees opportunities. Why? Let's talk about it. Number one, Boachuk, who was 18 and 0 with 18 KOs in the fight, had never gone the distance. Right? By definition, when you have a 100% KO ratio, you haven't gone the distance. The later rounds are foreign territory for you. Number two, Bohachuk, who throws hard hooks with both hands, doesn't have a great jab. So even when he's winning the fight, he has to come up close on you. He can't force you to get through a jab. There are no slow rounds with him. Again, because he doesn't have the jab. He can't win rounds three feet away from you. He needs to be in the pocket. He needs to be trying to rough you up. Now understand, that jab prevents a counter puncher from being able to load up on counter shots unless they have ring coverage. Unless they could time your jab, and as you're pulling it back, the guy's able to spring from where he is and jump across the arm's length that your jab's been occupying. Without a jab, you know where Boachuk was in the eighth round. He's right in front of Brandon Adams. Right, literally, right in front of him. Let me say this too. Boachuk had really bad punch selection. Okay, Adams is right in front of him. Adams is a little bit shorter than he is. Right? He's right in front of Boachuk. You would think that Boachuk would be clever, right? And would make it such that he's not naked up top. In other words, while guys have been stopped on liver shots, on body shots, right? Think Oscar De La Hoya against Bernard Hopkins. It's not that common, right? Think Luke Campbell against Ryan Garcia. It's not that common. By the way, the puffing in the background's my daughter. Thank God for virtual backgrounds. Well, let me just say this. Instead, Boachuk in the pocket, already at risk, Decides he's going to throw body shots. Well, understand what that did. When Boachuk throws his right hand low to Brandon Adams, Brandon Adams has a clear counter left hook up top. 
Boachuk has nothing up here. He's not defensively blessed. In other words, he doesn't have a hand like this as he throws a body shot. Right, understand, he's not rolling away as he throws the body shot. No, this is a young kid who's never been seriously tested. This is a young, unbeaten guy. So you know the rest. He throws a body shot like this. And as he throws the body shot like this, <laughs> as he throws the body shot like this, he's wide open up top. He hasn't even thought about the possibility that Brandon Adams may have figured out his punch pattern and may have been waiting for him to throw that right hook to the body so that Adams could unleash up top. Let's also talk about why I'm hesitant to bet on really young fighters. Hold on. Hey. Let's talk about why I'm a little bit hesitant to bet on young fighters who've never faced adversity. Right after Boachuk is badly hurt by the left hook, right? Badly hurt. Even though he's the bigger man, even though Adams is right in front of him, he doesn't know how to clinch Adams, right? He's badly hurt. What does he do? He backs away into Adams's power zone, right? He's badly hurt. Somehow he finds himself up against the ropes with Adams right in front of him, right? A veteran fighter, Think Jaling Zhang in the last round of his fight against Jerry Forrest. A veteran fighter might have turned his back on Adams, right? Even if the referee takes away a point in the round, hell, at least you're still upright, right? At least you've bought yourself some time. At least you're still in the fight. No, Boachuk, who had never lost, who was never forced to go the distance, doesn't know how to clinch, doesn't know how to turn away, doesn't know how to grab one of Adams's hands, doesn't know how to just fall on Adams, right? He's a shorter man, just lean and smother him, smother his power, doesn't know how to put his hands up, you know, figuring, look, I've just been hit with a headshot let me put my hand up so the guy doesn't double up. Let me turtle so the guy can't find my head. If he wants to go to work on my body, okay, great. It's my head that's woozy. Put differently, Boachuk was too young and was too unbeaten to have survival skills. So he gets hit with the left hook. You know the rest. He's dazed and confused. He backs up a little bit. Doesn't know where he is. Adams goes over, closes the show. Fortunately, he did so in the second half of the eighth round. So, more bear for us. Understand, Adams is the kind of fighter who would give anyone a hard time. He's already fought Jamal Charlo, the bigger Charlo. He just took out an unbeaten guy with a 100% KO ratio. In both fights, Brandon Adams is in survival mode for several rounds. And by that, I mean constant movement, not a lot of punches, is fully aware that if he throws punches early on a young guy, he's going to tire himself out. And the young guy who has a full tank might be able to take his punches. Brandon Adams isn't that gifted a puncher. So, of course, this is the KG vet who is lingering, right? You want to think about overs in Adams' fights. He's lingering. He's waiting for the younger lion to tire a little bit before he tries to tame him. Let me also say this, too. You know, don't be fooled by odds and records. Boxing is not standardized, right? And so, a lot of casual gamblers will look at a fight like this, see Boa Chuk's record, 18 and 0, 18 KOs, would see some losses on Brandon Adams' records. We'll overlook the fact that his most recent loss was to Jamal Charlo, who calls himself the hitman, and that Adams went the distance in that fight. 
And gamblers will conclude that this fight was, you know, a mismatch. It's anything but. Everyone in boxing starts out with a great record. And it's only when, in the middle of their career, when they step up against world-class competition, KG vets like Brandon Adams, who are there to linger, who are there to take the fight into the later rounds, and who have strategic punches in mind. I'm sure Adams saw off the film before the fight that the left hook was open to him because Boachuk was too upright and too close okay. and couldn't coast from outside, didn't have enough of a back foot game. Anyway, that's how I saw it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.